به برنامه نان دوستان خوش اومدید سلام به همگی من مریم نمازی هم و من فریبوز پویو هستم در برنامه این هفته در رابطه با زلزله تراژیک در ایران صحبت خواهیم کرد و فساد و بیمسئولیتی جمهوری اسلامی در قبال زلزله زدگان مصابه این هفته با ران احمد مبارز حقوق زنان مسلمان سابق از عربستان سعودی است فتوای احمقانمون در رابطه با یک کنفرانس کسانی که فکر میکنن زمین صافه صحبت خواهیم کرد و لحظه زیبای زندگیمون در رابطه با محمود صالحی و آزادی این رهبر کارگری عزیز از زندان با ما باشید زلزله که اخیرا در ایران اتفاق افتاد میدونیم که نزدیک 500 نفر کشته شدن ده ها هزار نفر مجروح شدن و خیلی ها بی خانه موندن و خب این چیزی که اولین چیزی که به چشم میخوره در این تراژدی انسانی واقعا اینه که چقدر فساد توی جمهوری اسلامی هست که اگر که این اتفاق توی یک کشور متمدن تری صورت میگرفت مثل ژاپن انقدر افراد جونشون رو همینطوری از دست نمیدادن تمام زیر بنای سیستم استراری که وجود نداره همش از بین رفته واقعا و دولت هیچ احساس مسئول نسبت به مردم نمیکنه و تنها مردم هستن که خودشون از شهرهای مختلف شروع کردن آمدن به کمک کسایی که زلزل زده شدن و حالت همبستگی طبیعی مردم رو کشونده بیان کمک کنن از لباس و خوراک و پوشاک جدا از این که اخبار میاد که تمام اموال جوامل جمهوری اسلامی چیزای کمک مردم رو میدوزن یا میفروشن یا به اسم خودش رو سعی میکنن ببرن ولی هیچ سیستم استراری در جمهوری اسلامی وجود نداره و این تراژدی خیلی زیادی برای مردمی که تحت این حکومت زندگی میکنن خب این اهمیت بالایی داره به خاطر اینکه وقتی که نگاه میکنیم تو اون مدت کوتاه بعد از یک اتفاق اینجوری اون موقع است که کسایی که مثلا زیر آوار آوار و خاک مثلا زیرش هستن, هستن یا گیر افتادن میتونن شاید نجات پیدا کنن و هر چقدر دیرتر این کمک بیاد خب زندگی خیلی بیشتر تعداد بیشتری از بین میره و خب اخبار هست از کسانی که حتی زنده موندن بعد از زلزله ولی به خاطر سرما برای مثال توی بیرون خوابیدن بدون چادر خب جونشون از دست دادن و یا مجروح بودن و نتونستن کمک فوری بگیرن و این باعث شده که تلفات خیلی بیشتری داشته باشیم و تمام عوامل جمهوری اسلامی صحبت از میکنن که دعا کنیم به طرف خدا احتمال داره به خاطر گناه باشه و این امر طبیعه نه مرگ مردم توی ایران و اصلا این زلزله هیچ طبیعی نبود یکی از ما علتش این بود که سیستم ساختمان سازی که کاملا دست سپاه و سازمان های دولتیه و نشون داد که چقدر سیستم فاسدیه و چطوری زندگی مردم رو با زندگی مردم بازی کردن و سال هاست این کار دارم میکنن راه حلش اینه که این وضعیت رو دوست بشه و خب یه واقعیت هم اینه که چیزی که فقط چیزی که امید بخشه تو این موقعیت واقعا خیلی تراژدی انسانی اینه که چقدر مردم دارن میشه تا برن که کمک کنن یعنی از از تا چشم میتونه ببینه مثلا ویدیویی هست از ماشینایی که دارن سعی میکنن ماشینای شخصی که دارن سعی میکنن برسن به منطقه و کمک رسانی کنن و واقعا این جای امیده که به حال در حالی که جمهوری اسلامی انقدر فاسده و انقدر بی توجه به وضعیت زندگی مردم نه. مردم اومدن و دارن سعی میکنن دخالت کنن ولی خب کافی نیست کافی نیست و به شکل واقعی این وضعیت نشون داد در عین حال که مردم همبستگی با هم دارن ولی نشون داد که زندگی مردم واقعا در خطره زنده بوندن زنده موندن مردم در خطره و همه میدونن که مسئول این کار تو جامعه ایران کیست Uh, Rana Ahmad, such a pleasure to have you with us. I want to talk to you first about the photo in Mecca with the Atheist Republic sign. Tell me about that. Uh, in this moment, I was really afraid. I was weak. It was really 
such a mixed uh, feeling. You are ex-Muslim, you are atheist, and you are here in this place uh, with two million or three million Muslim. I want to say with this paper, I am not alone. If you come here, you are not alone. If you are here, you are someone else here. I want to say help me for all the world. I want to send message also for the government in Saudi Arabia. You don't let the people to be free in the religion. There is ex-Muslim come here. There is atheist come here by force, by the family. They don't have choice. If you don't allow the freedom of religion, this is what will happen. I think also the Muslim society, they will not be happy if you are ex-Muslim or you are kafir or atheist and you are in Mecca. So there is no freedom, there is no accept for us like ex-Muslim, this is what will happen. And I think I am not alone, only the one girl go there by force, by the family. Before I carry on, those things are showing. Your, uh yeah. yeah. And also uh, stay back a bit from the table because okay. I think it's going to shake. Okay. So when you went to Mecca, did you go with your family or was it something you planned to do? No. How, what was the background? Uh, my mother was thinking something wrong with me. She was thinking maybe Rana, she not believe anymore. Maybe Rana think different now and she want to be sure I am not something else, only Muslim and she, uh, she planned to make this trip. I don't want to go. I do everything. I say I am sick. I have a lot to do in work. My mom, please, I don't want to go. But she wants to make me really clean from inside. She wants me to go there to make this Hajj and we go. And in this moment when I was going, I feel really sad. I want to cry, but I can't. You can show your feeling for your Muslim family. You have to be smiling, happy, because you will go there. But from inside, I was like, something kill me. And by this photo, I want to say, I am suffering. Please, someone come. Please, someone help me. Uh, I want to say for the government, I am here like kafir. Did you all accept that? It's interesting that you saw it as a way of asking for help. For us who saw it, it looked like such a strong act of resistance. It's it looked like someone is strong, but I don't was. I know if someone see me take this photo, I will be killed in this moment. But I don't care. I was only. I want to show the world. We are like atheist forced to go there. We are like ex-Muslim forced to go there. Did someone know that? I think other people say this photo think I am really strong, I want to make something against Islam, but I only want to respect me like ex-Muslim. I only want to respect me like someone, don't believe in God, please leave me alone. Yeah. What are some of the other um, aspects of the fact that you were ex-Muslim in Saudi Arabia? This pressure to do things that you didn't want to do is one aspect. Tell me a bit about the others, also the fact that you're a woman. Um, like women, you can talking about zero rights in Saudi Arabia for women. So you are ex-Muslim, you want to go out, you can't. You want to have your flat or your room, you can't. You want to do something to get out from your family or from the society, you can't. Because you are women in Saudi Arabia and Muslim society. So I was really thinking from long, long time. I was crying in my bed. I say, please someone come to help me. I don't notice that, some, that someone will help me. It's me. If I plan, if I have power, if I think about really where to get out from there, it will, it will done. It will be really like really. And this is what happened. I was planning for more than two years to get out. And after two years, it's it's done. You, you do lots of protests uh, against the veil, the, the niqab and uh, all-encompassing hijab. Uh, tell me how it felt to wear it and also why you think this sort of protest is so important? Uh, like an uh, atheist wearing hijab every day, like a Muslim woman, and from inside you are not and I have photo show how it's this mix for me. I was drawing like a face in my hand and I was putting the top and I do it for myself. I want to see my life in my eyes to have like power runner get out from here. And also this photo like published everywhere because 
it's really show you someone really atheist from inside but from outside Muslim even for Muslim girl I I was hear something like from Muslim girl they say I don't want to wear hijab I don't want to wear niqab I am Muslim but I don't want to do that I know my religion I know my God but I don't want to do it but they don't have choice in our society in Muslim or in Saudi Arabia or in Middle East in general so what what do you feel now that you're out? I mean, there's so many problems still out here as well. Cultural relativism, tolerance for, uh, you know, everything from the Negab to Sharia courts. How do you feel now that you're out? And uh, what do you feel you need to do still? Um, I want really to push uh, Europe or uh, Germany especially. First, to forbidden uh, hijab for children. This is really important. I don't know how the society like Europe accept that and say it's normal when you say children like girls five or six years put this in your hair. Did you think you are pedophilia society and we are we have to do that? Or what's the point to accept that? No one can feel what this girl is feeling. I was worrying that when I was nine or ten years. I know what I was feeling. I, I live with that. I know how she feels. I don't want anyone to suffer. I think in the future I will I will try to do something to Agnes that and also to Agnes Niqab or Burko. We are in open society. Everyone not feel shame from his face. Why you are shame here? You have right, you have your choice. I, I think there is no woman choose to wear that. I don't think so. And what's this uh, new project also, Asylum uh, for Atheist Refugees? Explain what you're doing. Yeah. Um, after what happened to me, after I get help from Atheist Republic, from Ex-Muslim Britain, from all amazing people I know from internet, I'm thinking here in Germany we have really to build an organization, not only GBS or Ex-Muslim uh, Deutschland. We have something really to help others with name Atheist. And we built something, Atheist Refugee Help. This it will be like helping, supporting Atheist Refugee by money, help, by contact, by network, do something really to help them. Uh, we start like three people, me and other two friends in GBS, and then we start to be more big and more, and then we have this organization. We, ha we hope by this one can really help other ex-Muslim or Atheists in this world. So, tell me um, about contacts in Saudi Arabia. I'm sure there are people who contact you uh, and who are inspired by what you've done. Uh, talk a little bit about that. Um, I feel really heartbroken when I hear from girl Rana, please do something for me. When I know she don't have password, she don't have any way to get out. I feel like if I have La, if, I, if I have airport, I will send all my flat to get this girl here. I, I feel like really sorry. I feel like how it's come now in 2018, we will be, and still there is women, they can get out from their house. They can do simple things like walking in the street, like removing them cover, like talking with other people. It's something really make you really feel bad from this. And you know, because Saudi Arabia is a rich country with the oil, no one can do anything with this country. You can fuck your, your people, there is no problem. But from other way, I will try in the future to make law to protect this woman, not only in Saudi Arabia, even in other country. Uh, one final question is, um, you know when you talked about being in Mecca and you were feeling so desperate and so, uh, you, you, it was like a cry for help, how do you feel now? I feel I am proud about myself, I can't say that, because now and every day I walk here in Germany, I feel like Rana, you did it. Rana, you deserve to have your freedom. And I feel like in every moment, I want to bring more to this feeling. All, all the girls, they have to really feel what I feel. Like, I, if I can share it in any way to all the girls in the Muslim society, I will do it. Everyone really deserves to be free, not only me.
just one final question. You uh, speak German now? How yeah. Have you been here? <laughs> I speak German now. I have to speak German because I want to study nuclear physics or quantum mechanics. So I really need to have to work fast for my language. I am now in like a preparing year for university and I think next year I will start my university. Brilliant, brilliant. Good luck with that. Thank you, thank my darling Anna. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. اولین کنفرانس کسانی که بگم کنن زمین صافه در نورت کارلینا آمریکا صورت گرفت و بلیتی 250 دلار بود 500 تا خنگالا رفت اونجا شکر کردن واقعا بازشون خرابه سوال از میکنم که زمین صافه فکر کنم 400-500 سال از این خبرها نبوده دوره داره برگشت برگشت این ایده و میگن که ماه و خورشید اینا فقط به شکل پروژیکت شده و ناسا این کار میکنه که مردم ناسا دروغ میگه که مردم رو گول بزنه و در یکی و با چندشون مسابقه کردن که چون گفتون من خودم پنج و شست ساعت ویدیو نگاه کردم دیدم که تم شد یه آدمه اطلاعات گرفتن در این مورد دنیا صافت و خودم رفتن نبه در یا نگاه کردم دیدم هر چی نگاه کردم از این ور به اون ور همه افوق نگاه دلیل و خب سال دیگه هم یه کنفرانس دارن به نظر ما همه همون بریزیم تو کنفرانس یه سری هاشون رو بدازیم ببریم شد توی فضا از اون بالا پرتشو کنم پایین ببینن زمین گرده یا صافه واقعا فضاهای های احمقانه فقط اسلامی نیست نه دیوانه در دنیا فراغان است محمود صالحی رهبر کارگری بعد از سه هفته زندانی دوباره آزاد شد و خب جمهوری اسلامی میخواست برای یک سال مجددن ایشون رو زندانی کنن ولی به خاطر فشارهای عمومی مجبور شدن ایشون رو بعد از سه هفته آزاد کنن واقعا خیلی خبر خوشایندیه محمود صالحی رو از تخت بیمارستان موقعی که رفته بود برای دیالیز جمهوری اسلامی رو بود و به زندان برد و تحت فشار عمومی مجبور شد که آزادش بکنه و این خبر خوش رو ما به خانوادهش دوستاش و تمام حوالهاش تبریک عرض می‌کنیم و خب مشخصه که همه زندانیان سیاسی در ایران باید فورا و بدون غیر شرط آزاد بشن به هر حال رسیدیم به انتهای برنامه‌مون امیدوارم هفته خوبی داشته باشین و تا هفته آینده دامی دیدار And I'm Fadi Bospuya. We're hosting a program called Bread and Roses. It's a weekly program that's broadcast in Persian and English in the Middle East and North Africa, primarily Iran as well. And it's also shown on YouTube internationally. And we've been doing this since last May. We're coming up to a year's anniversary. And yeah. we, we've had quite a lot of fun making these videos. We discuss taboo breaking, free thinking ideas. The Islamic regime of Iran has called us immoral and corrupt and that's why the, you need to support us we are and the alternative voice in Middle East and North Africa of corruption and immorality so do support us here's a short video from patreon that explains how you can help us with even just one dollar a week that's nothing support us
Patreon lets fans become patrons of their favorite artists and content creators. It's different than Kickstarter because it's not about one big project that requires lots of funding. It's more for bloggers or YouTubers or webcomics, anyone who creates on a regular basis. Here's how it works. When you become a patron, you're agreeing to give an artist a tip of an amount you set every time they release a piece of content, whether it's a new song, a video, or a recipe. You can set a monthly maximum to make sure that you're always within your budget. Choose an amount, enter your payment information, and you're done. Becoming a patron allows you to view and post in the artist's stream, and in exchange for your support, artists offer additional patron packages, which might include monthly Google Hangouts, music production tutorials, pre-sale concert tickets, or anything they can offer as a way to say thanks. Patreon, empowering a new generation of content creators.